Let's take a look at how to use layers at the assembly level. To access your layers in the assembly, just like at the part level, you can go to the View tab and you can choose the Layers icon, but this is something that you'll probably use quite frequently, so I highly recommend that you place it in the Quick Access Toolbar. So when I click on the Layers command, it brings up my layer tree, and because of the configuration option I have set, it's being displayed in its own separate window apart from the model tree. And first off, in the part video, I recommended that you configure your default start parts and your default start assemblies to have a layer scheme that makes sense for you and your organization because I find that the default layering scheme that's provided by PTC and its templates tends to be confusing for new and even experienced users. There are a lot of layers that come over from PTC's default templates and the names are a little cryptic and so this can be difficult for users to comprehend and be able to use. Now one thing about the way that layers work at the assembly level is that if layers in components, whether they are parts or subassemblies, have the same name, they'll be grouped together in the layer tree. For example, I'll expand this layer over here for the part default datum planes, and we'll see that the layers of those names exist in the bolt, the nut, the reducer part, the straight part, and also in the reducer assembly, but you'll notice that if I expand the nut part, I can see the default datum planes for the part level in that particular part, but there aren't any datum planes uh, that are part default datum planes at the assembly level for this component, so that's why there's no node to expand over here. Another thing to note about the way that layers work in assemblies is that any layers from the components are brought up to the assembly level as well. So for example, if I expand this holes layer, this is that layer that I created in the reducer part. And similarly, here's the solid geom layer that I created in the reducer part as well. And the nice thing about bringing these layers up and also grouping them is that you can access the layers for all the components or multiple components with just a couple of mouse clicks. I can select this layer and choose hide. And then when I repaint the screen, that way I've hidden all the part level default datum planes. Okay, let's take a look at creating a layer at the assembly level. And before I do that, I'm just going to turn off all my datums with one fell swoop. And one thing that is commonly used with layers at the assembly level is to control the display of entire components. To create a new layer, just like before, I will right click over the layer tree and in the pop up menu I'll choose new layer. And let's give this layer a name. I'll call it fasteners. And I could manually pick components, either out of the model tree or the graphics area. But in this case here, I've got a, a bunch of different fasteners in here. I'm going to write a rule. So I'll go to the Rules tab again. We'll go to the Options tab. We'll choose Independent to say that it's independent of the default layering scheme. And I'll check the box for Associative. So again, Associative means that it's going to pertain to any objects that already uh, correspond to the rules and rules enabled means that if I add any objects in the future that pertain to the rules they'll automatically be added to the layer. Now I'll choose edit rules and in this case over here I'm going to use a different option. I can search for components or features. Uh, you could do it by name, you could do it by type, uh, you could use expression. For example, if I had a parameter called fastener that was set to yes or no, I could use that. But instead, I'm going to change what I'm looking for. I'm going to scroll down in the list over here and change this to solid model because now that allows me to search for components by size. And one thing that might be convenient for you, especially if you have a big assembly, you could say that, hey, I want to grab all the components bigger or smaller than a certain size to add them to a layer. And so for the size, you could use relative or absolute. So for example, for absolute, you could say, hey, anything that is smaller than an inch, uh, go ahead and select, or you could use relative. And relative compares it to the size of the bounding box of the assembly. What that means is 
Creo Parametric puts a box around the assembly and it measures the cross diagonal length of that bounding box and that is the length of the assembly. And so for picking the small component, I can say, let's grab everything that is less than, let's try 10% of the length of that bounding box. And so when I click preview results, hey, I found 16 items, grabbed all the bolts, all the nuts. So now I can click OK and click OK out of here. And that way I can right click on a layer and choose hide. And that way, those objects are no longer displayed. Another thing to note about layers at the assembly level, if you want to access the layers of an individual component, you can do that from the drop-down list. And it'll show you all the different components inside of here. Or you could use the pick icon. And that way, I could say, hey, let's go ahead and take a look at the layers in this part called straight. I've switched over to a different assembly to show you the power of isolate at the assembly level. And you can see in this model, it's got quite a few components and it can make it a little difficult to work on, especially if I'm work want to focus on one particular area in the model. And so this is a great use for isolate. So to access the layers, you could do it from the view tab, or again, I like to do it from the quick access toolbar. I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'll right click and choose new layer and I'm not going to change the name and I'm just going to pick a few different components that I am interested in working on. And so I've selected those three different components. I'll click OK and here I have the layer. Now I can go to the drop down menu over here from the icon and choose isolate. And that way, when I'm working on this assembly, I only see those three particular components and I don't have the clutter of the rest of the model tree. And then when I'm done working on those particular components, I can right click on it and choose unhide and it brings back the rest of the components. So that's how Isolate can help you out. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please hit the subscribe button so that way you can be informed whenever new videos are added. Thank you very much.